Hello, everyone, and welcome to our November Party and Friends Meetup. I am Caroline, your host for today. Uh, today, we got two great talks lined up for you. First, with Pierre Krieger, who I have here on the screen with me. He's going to be talking about substrate light, a pro prototype re-implementation of substrate client designed to be lighter in terms of code size and memory footprint. And then followed him, we'll have Alex Seaman, who will walk you through the custom substrate palette developed for social network on Subsocial. Before we start, I want to quickly announce that we also have a, another great event happening here on Crowdcast uh, next Thursday, December 3rd, um, and it's called Polkadot Decoded. Uh, on as, at this event, we'll like learn the different aspects of the network's core tech, such as power chains and cross network bridges. Uh, and the event will end with a special fireside chat with uh, Polkadot co-founder Gavin Wood, moderated by Laura Shin. So it should definitely be a great event. So be sure to to join us. Let me just share the link with you in the chat here. Um, before we get started with Pierre, just a few housekeeping. Uh, we have here on the right our open troll box. I see you're all pretty busy in there already. Um, and then if you want to ask Pierre a question um, about his presentation, there is an ask a question function just below to the left of the troll box. Um, submit your question in there. And then also you can vote on like your favorite questions so we can see which one is most favorite for him to answer. Okay, then I think Pierre, we're ready for you to start. So you want to get going? Mm -hmm. I do want to. Um, so let me figure out how to share my screen. One second. Okay. And we should be good to go. Okay. Uh, so welcome everyone. Um, as you can see on the slide, my name is Pierre Krieger. I work for Parity. Um, you might have heard of this company. Um, um, this substrate is an introduction. This talk is an introduction to Substrate Light. Uh, as Karen said, a lighter light client, a lighter client. Uh, before explaining what Substrate Light is, I'm going to give a very brief overview of how a substrate-based blockchain works. Uh, Substrate-based blockchain works. Uh, based blockchain is made of two parts. Part one is the runtime, which is made with frame, with palettes, etc. And if you type substrate tutorials on on Google, the tutorials are mostly going to be about writing your own runtime. Um, that's what I'm saying here. And what's when you don't belong to Parity, that's usually what you work on if you base your chain on Substrate. But that's not going to be uh, relevant for the talks today. What is relevant for the talk today is the Substrate client, which uses the Substrate runtime. It's what executes the runtime. And it's also what handles the networking, the database, and everything necessary to make the runtime work, run, pub, whatever. And as I said, that's what is relevant here. You might have seen this uh, diagram in the past explaining the difference between a runtime and a client. And the idea of Substrate Lite is to replace the Substrate Client. So what exactly is Substrate Lite? It's this repository. You, you, I invite you to, to click on the link. It doesn't work. Copy past the link, like write down the link, I mean. Um, it's written in Rust, but it's written almost from scratch. And the point is to become a drop-in replacement for the Substrate client. So you build your runtime. You want to run your chain instead of using the Substrate, the substrate client, you use Substrate Lite. Or you have an existing chain using Substrate. That's the most likely uh, situation. You have an existing chain. You can use Substrate Lite to connect to it. Um, and the goal is to be compatible with Substrate. As I mentioned, it's a drop-in replacement. Um, I'm wondering if you can see my slide or if my face is in the way. I don't know if it's my view or not. Tell me if you cannot see the slide. Um, the point is to be a drop-in replacement. So it's it should be compatible with all runtimes. It should use the same networking protocol as the main client and the same JSON RPC requests as the, ma as the main client which means that you should be able to, to plug, for instance, Polkadot.js on top of Substrate Lite. And the, the goal, the objective of Substrate Lite is that it just works. A little cover up I mentioned. I don't know if I can do something about it. Uh, 
Can I hide myself? Uh, no, you can't. No, I can't. Oh, no, I'm smaller. Oh, well, OK, let me know if I can do something. Um, the only difference is we would not use the same database engine as the main client. You cannot sync using Substrate and then continue syncing with Substrate I. They don't use the, the same database. Uh, the Substrate I don't even use RocksDB or PowerMTDB. It uses a totally different database engine, so they are not compatible at all. Uh, here is a brief overview of what is implemented and what is not. I'm not going to go into the details. Um, I just put one bullet for each major area of how a substrate-based blockchain works, how a substrate client works. So it's 50-50. Um, well, everything related to verifying blocks and syncing the chain is implemented, basically. Everything related to offering block is not implemented. Uh, some important things such as um, receiving block announces is not implemented, but it's in the way. Basically, it's gotten good progress, but not finished yet. And you might, not, you might wonder why, why even do that? Um, it started as a weekend project, like many projects. Uh, you can say thanks to COVID for that. Otherwise, Substrate Light might not exist. And the utility of Substrate Light was found only later. It didn't start with a specific purpose. It's, it was just a fun project. And later, we were like, oh, we can use it for the browser light client. So what do I mean by browser light client? We've had this project for a very long time of running a Substrate node in a browser. When I say Substrate node, it's, of course, a client that could connect to a Substrate base based blockchain, such as Polkadot. We, we want to run a light client within the browser directly, so from JavaScript. JavaScript should be able to talk directly to a node. Um, so browser or node.js, wasn't sure exactly. Um, and we tried to compile Substrate and Polkadot directly for WebAssembly and run it in the browser, but that was tougher than expected. Uh, Substrate and Polkadot are very complex code bases, not easy to make compile. The resulting WASM was huge, 22 megabytes, 23. Um, imagine you go on a website and it's downloading 22 megabytes of JavaScript, you're not going to be happy. And uh, integrating the WASM with Polkadot.js was kind of complicated, uh, most notably because of WASM bindgen needed to plug to the JavaScript and the WASM needs to be loaded asynchronously. It's a huge, complicated mess. And um, Substrate Lite, however, was conceived, not conceived to do that, but has a design that is thought with that use case in mind. And we, as a proof, we have already a Substrate Lite package on NPM. You can uh, write down the link, you can virtually, oh, it's hidden by my face. Well, it's just npmjs.com slash package slash substrate light. You search substrate light on npmjs.com. Um, and it's a JavaScript package, a regular JavaScript package. You don't have to do anything special to use it. It's a, a regular JavaScript package. It's got a user-friendly API. I try to make it user-friendly. I'm not a, a JavaScript expert, but I think it's very easy to use. And the point is anyone who writes JavaScript should be able to connect directly to the chain using this uh, uh, JavaScript package. So how I achieved that, uh, we have some specific coding rules. So Substrate Light is split into two, two distinct parts, the library part and the binary part. The binary part is built on top of the library part. And the library, which is around 90% of the code, it's, it's really the biggest part of the library. It's entirely written to be embeddable. It's adhering very strictly to no STD. No STD meaning, uh, for people who don't know Rust, no STD meaning cannot use the standard library, can only use the core library and not anything related to operating systems, which means the library uh, is not allowed to use threads, background tasks, is not allowed to do any logging. I don't use the log rate or tracing or anything like that. No logging at all. No operating system mutexes, no sockets. And yes, the networking is implemented without sockets. Um, the trick is to 
emit some request for the binary parts to actually spawn the socket. I invite you to look at the code base to understand how it works. Uh, and in addition, in addition to, di to this, um, the function names must say exactly what they do. It's not, we don't have any function that says process or update or do things. When you have a function, it must say exactly run one block, for instance, so that you know when you call a function, it does this, not more, it doesn't spawn anything in the background, no hidden effect. It, the function starts, it does only CPU stuff, it stops, and then you get back the hand. Uh, no threads definitions. Why? Because traits are confusing for the reader. So in the entire code base, there isn't any trace definition. If I'm not mistaken, there might be one exception. I don't remember if it's still there. And um, we don't use wasm bind gen. That's what I mentioned earlier. We want to integrate it uh, with Poker.js and wasm bind gen made things way more complicated. So instead of compiling for wasm32 dash unknown unknown, uh, we compile for wasm32 dash wasi or wasi. I don't even know if it's wasi or wasi. Wasi is this uh, operating system like environment made by Mozilla kind of an operating system on top of, uh, well, not on top, but using WebAssembly. Uh, another, um, so in the previous slide, I explained uh, how we achieved the goal of putting it in the browser. And another objective in addition to putting it in the browser is documenting how a substrate client works. What I mean by that is a lot of emphasis has been put on code clarity and code documentation not as much as uh, I would like, because I'm only a single person, and it's not uh, quick to do. So here is a link to the documentation. It's hosted on GitHub pages. You can also find it in the readme or substrate light. And uh, it's really trying to be detailed to explain, for instance, what a block is, what the format of a header is, how grandpa works, how babe works. I invite you to go to the, um, uh, verify module and then BAPE. And there's a good explanation of how BAPE works, a very detailed explanation. The objective of that is one should be able to learn the design of Polkadot and substrates by reading the code, not necessarily the code, but at least the code commands and the code documentation that's around it. The code is hard to write. I'm not going to pretend the code is easy to, uh, sorry, the code is hard to read. I'm not going to pretend the code is easy to read and figure out, but the explanation, the documentation should explain everything clearly, hopefully. Uh, the last objective is to experiment with new things because if experimenting with substrate art is easy, experimenting with substrate is hard and, and risky because we don't want to integrate features in substrate light, uh, in substrate, sorry, it's used in production only to remove them later. That's not something possible. Whereas substrate light, it's easy. We can do whatever we want. We can break it as much as we want. We have two ex example experimentations that I'm going to detail a little bit later. Two things that are in substrate light and not in substrate. And if components work well, the point is to upstream them. Like no feature should remain exclusive to substrate light. The point is to use substrate light to experiment and then upstream them to substrate. I put some emojis to fill the, the empty space below. So how does substrate light perform? Because these are the objectives, but how is it achieving its objectives? So for the JavaScript package, I mentioned that uh, the Polkadot compiled to Wasm is 22.6 megabytes, I think. For Substrate type, the package size is 4 megabytes. You can also see it on npm.js. 4 megabytes uncompressed, so if you compress it, that's approximately half. The actual Wasm file is only 3 megabytes. However, to solve other distribution issues, we I just base 64, the, the Wasm binary, and embed it into some regular .js file. And it solves basically 100% of the distribution problem because shipping a WASM file and executing it, like 
loading it on the side and executing it directly is still kind of uh, difficult with all the bundlers, you know, with Webpack, et cetera, parser. All this doesn't work very well yet, so just base64 it. Uh, I talked to Robin, the guy who works on Ink. The, the, the Ink team is a specialist uh, of reducing WASM file sizes. And Robin told me it should be shrinkable even more. I looked at the content of the WASM file and approximately one megabyte, so one third of the total size is just panic messages. You know, when something goes wrong, we want to show a message to the user so that we can debug it later. But if we remove all these messages, we can shrink even more by one third more. And so the drawback is we wouldn't be able to debug issues, but we, it would shrink it even more. Um, as for memory usage, approximately 100 megabytes. I measured that by using the JavaScript API. So it's, it's precise. It's what the JavaScript uses in terms of memory to run the web assembly. The, actual heap usage internally inside of the WASM of the program compared to WASM is only from 5 to 37 megabytes. That's what I measured. Uh, the reason why it's 100, why, why it's not capped at 37, for instance, is we've got a huge allocation at startup. And um, because we need to actually do a WASM we actually need to spawn a WASM virtual machine inside of a WASM virtual machine, and that takes a lot of memory. Uh, however, Substrate is designed, the light client in particular is designed to keep a very low amount of, of information memory, only the headers, only the non-finalized headers to be more precise, no block bodies, justification, no storage. The memory usage is designed to be very low. Um, only, as I said, the finalized block and higher. Everything finalized is thrown away. Um, I showed this diagram earlier, and there's this thing, syncing checkpoints. I put yes, that's one of the experimental features that is present in Substrate Lite and not in Substrate. So what is a checkpoint? Um, the checkpoint system consists in including in the chain specifications a section that indicates the star, the, the state, sorry, of the chain at a specific point, at a specific finalized point. And oops, sorry. And um, you put that in the chain specifications, then you start substrate light and start syncing from this checkpoint. So for instance, you run your Polkadot node, it's synced at block two million or something like that. You generate a checkpoint. You ask your node to generate a checkpoint. You put it in the chain specs. You start substrate right without any database. It starts from block two million. It doesn't start from block zero. And that's amazing because we're seeing two million blocks instantly. Um, afterwards, the syncing speed of the JavaScript package in particular is 1,000 to 1,050 blocks per second uh, on my machine. However, this is uh, networking bound. The networking is still a work in progress. What I mean by networking bound is if we improved the networking, made more parallel requests, or managed to speed up the networking, it would sync uh, faster, but that's not the case yet. Which means that every two hours in real life adds one second to the syncing duration. But in the future, the second experiment that is in progress more or less is grandpa warp sync. The point of grandpa warp sync is to download only one block every 2,400, because we don't actually need to verify the 2,399 in between. We only need to verify one every 2,400. And that multiplies the syncing speed by a lot. It doesn't multiply the syncing speed by 2,400, like we could imagine, because these blocks in particular, the ones we don't know, are heavier to verify than the others. But it should like significantly, significantly speed up the syncing to the point where it would be almost neg negligible. You start from a checkpoint, and then the rest would sync in one or two seconds. As for the full node, how does it perform? The binary size is 21 megabytes. This is a very, very unfair comparison with Polkadot, but Polkadot is 114 megabytes. I say it's completely unfair because Polkadot includes the native runtime, includes all the block offering code, all the grandpa networking code. It's like, Substitute is still missing tons of feature. 
in terms of memory usage, 500 megabytes approximately, but there's a memory leak, which means that I cannot actually tell you how much memory usage is using because it's, it's increasing over time. Um, but right now it starts syncing and it syncs for a few seconds and I see on the memory usage 500 megabytes why it is syncing. So assuming you fix the leak, there's no reason to believe that it has to go higher. Uh, the database size is not light at all, at all however. Uh, it's larger than the um, size of the substrate database for Polkadot, it would be 50 to 60 gigabytes because I don't know anything about database. Uh, if anyone is willing to maintain the database layer of substrate, uh, I, I don't expect any voluntary, but I don't know anything about databases. So unfortunately, that's not the best point. Um, also, um, to all the old blocks, the reason why the database is so big is we need to keep all the old blocks stored. In theory, you could also discard non-finance blocks, but that would be that, that would be bad for a network in general. New nodes need to be able to download old blocks, and so we need to keep them. The syncing speed is 1.7 times one of Polkadot, and I try to do this in a very fair way. Very fair way meaning I all the features necessary to verify blocks should be here. So I don't really know why it's faster. It's totally possible that Substrate is not performing some checks. I, I don't actually know. It's not being it's not being audited or anything like that. But at least it it means Substrate is performant. The transaction sec per second is not measured because it's not implemented. So cannot give any, uh, any number here. And demonstration time, um, I'm going to, so I have two repositories. Um, the first one, the first thing is a demonstration of a node running in the browser itself. The second repository is the one I'm going to show. This second one consists in running a node in Node.js that uses the substrate light package on, on npmjs.com. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen and change the screen share. Oops, you're not supposed to see that. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and, uh, okay, and share this instead. Uh, is this the right one? Okay. All right. So here is how you use Substrate Ad, the NPNJS package. So it's a regular package. Just use it as a dependency, no, nothing weird going on. And then you import it like a regular package and you start it. Substrate I dot start. You must pass some chain specs. You write out westend.json. And here's a callback that is called whenever the node sends a response to a request to, to some information you ask from a node. Start returns a promise. So I use then and uh, send requests here. The rest of the code here is, is all about starting a, a WebSocket server. And whenever we, we receive a request on the WebSocket server, we then ask the node for this request, and then we send back the response. That's just to show you the code, but it's very, to show you that it's very easy to use. And I'm going back to my other thing. Choo -choo -choo. And normally, if I do things right, do, do, do. npm. So you don't see it, but I just run npm run start on the thing I just showed you. And oh, it's not loaded my screen because I need to do this. And here I'm going to run polka.js.org. Is that the correct URL? Yes. And uh, Oh, it's okay. Here we go. So it's connected to my node that's using the, using the JavaScript package. It started from block three million something because I have a checkpoint. There's no database or anything. That's the, the entire, that's the point of the demo. I didn't set up any database system. So it started syncing for block 300, three million. Sorry, that's the checkpoint. And you can see approximately the syncing speed. It's a bit slow, unfortunately. Haha, <laughs> I made false promises. It's a bit slow here. 
But if I had a more recent checkpoint, I made this checkpoint a week ago, approximately. If I had more a more recent checkpoint, it would almost already be synced. And with Grandpa Warp Sync, it should be synced in one or two seconds. Uh, it's not fully implemented, so it's syncing right now. You can see the, the finalized and best block updating. But uh, for instance, if I go here, this doesn't work. The, the the, uh, this works actually, but basically any storage request isn't working because it's not implemented yet. I haven't implemented the, the storage proof requests yet. But that's it. That's the demonstration. And um, choo -choo -choo. oh, here we go. I do this. And end of the talk. Do you have questions? There's a, a few questions submitted. Mm -hmm. So I can ask you these. Uh, I can look myself or something. I don't know. Or, or um, if you want to ask me the questions. I want to read them out so people can hear them when they come back to the recording. So first one, I often hear that swappable consensus is one of Substrate's most powerful features. And I noticed that leaving it out is one way you can choose to simply simplify Substrate Lite. Can you explain the complexity of implementing swappable consensus? Um, so Substrate Lite doesn't leave swappable consensus on the side. Uh, what Substrate Lite leaves on the side is implemented, you, implementing your own consensus system, like in a separate repository. If you have a chain, if you create your own chain with your custom um, consensus system, you need to implement it in Substrate Lite as well. You cannot plug it on top of Substrate Lite or anything like that. Right now, Polkadot, uh, Substrate and Polkadot don't support Swapper consensus. There's a plan to support it by doing uh, what we call a regenesis. We generate a new genesis block starting from an existing state, but with a different consensus engine. Substrate I does not support that, not because it doesn't want to, but because there's no, there's, I don't know how it's going to work yet in details, but that's the answer. Cool. So next one, how much of a drop in replacement would it be um, if it's completely the same API surface, uh, isn't a compromise to possibly deviate from the original and have more ergonomic API? Um, so I, it depends at, on which API layer you're talking. Um, for the library part, if you use the Rust library Substrate Lite, the API is completely different from the one of Substrate and it's indeed more ergonomic in my opinion. Uh, of course, that's very subjective. But in my opinion, it's more ergonomic right now. I invite you to look on the documentation link I put earlier. If you're talking about um, the JavaScript package, right now the JavaScript package communicates with the outside via RPC requests. It's kind of a hack, but it would also be a, a lot, a lot, a lot of efforts to recreate another API in the JavaScript package. So I just went for a very simple solution. But nothing's ex excluded. Technically speaking, you could create a new API between the JavaScript package and the outside. Can you elaborate on why traits are confusing for the reader? Uh, by Hernando. Um, so that's very subjective, but when I see a trait, when I'm reading Rust code and I see a trait definition, anything non-trivial, I need to jump to a different file to read the, what the trait is. And um, that's one point. So if you're reading code and there's, I don't know, 15 traits being used, you, you're going to have to switch between 15 files. And I personally hate that. I think it makes everything way more complicated to read than it is. And uh, second part, traits are basically callbacks, which means you're injecting some secondary behavior into your primary function. And that can also fuck up with a lot of things. For instance, if you, if you inject a trait that does a, da a database request in the background, you're going to increase the time your function takes by, don't know, milliseconds or hundreds of milliseconds if you read from the disk. It just fucks a bit too much. Dependent in injection fucks a bit too much with readability, with predicting what the function is going to do, in my opinion. That's very subjective, obviously. 
Maybe you mentioned and I missed it, but for what kind of round trip time is there for grabbing data from storage in light mode? Since light node does not keep any storage. So if you need to access the storage in light mode, you need to send a request to a full node and the full node returns a proof, returns the value plus a proof. That's not implemented yet, as you commented below. Uh, but the round, time, round, the round trip time should be like the ping time, basically. Have you been keeping an eye on was, WASM uh, execution leverage GPU over CPU? This may allow Substrate Lite to use browser-based GPU acceleration if the browser can support the underlying WebAssembly GPU execution instead of the browser WASM uh, being CPU bound? Uh, I had no idea you could execute WASM on the GPU. This is completely new to me. And um, OK, I'm going to Google that. I don't, didn't know that was possible. OK. Is there any reason why would wouldn't try to use existing open source databases that can be loaded within a browser instance. I also think that fo focusing on a browser extension based package might be better a better use case, which vastly expands a variety of DB opportunities. Um, so in the demo I showed there is no database, but you, you can use a database with a browser light client. Well, I call it data, so it's not a, really a database. I just um, serialize the finalized block and all the state on the side and put it um, put it as a string somewhere in the local storage and then reload it later. It's maybe one kilobyte. So it's a kind of a database. I didn't show it in the demo, but the code is there. The code is there. You can save the state of a chain and reload it. And then the last question is, is a substrate light full node capable of a cross swapping from other blockchains and act as an exchange? What is an advantage of using a light full node to do a regular full node? Uh, so that's two different questions, I guess. Um, is substrate light capable of cross swapping from other blockchains? Depends what you mean by other blockchains. If you're talking about substrate based blockchains, I guess, yes you would need to customize it to connect to both chains at once, but it should be possible. If you're asking if it's a Bitcoin client, for instance, obviously not, it's specifically for Substrate. Um, the advantage of running it as a full node, of running a light full node, are we talking about Substrate light full node or a light node? Uh, the advantages of running Substrate light as a full node compared to a regular node, there's none at the moment, it's an experiment. Uh, the advantage of running a light client is it's lighter to, to answer a, a bit vaguely. Okay, so last question just, just got submitted. Have you been looking at the new work being done with WASI? It might make it possible to modularize the monolithic WASM binary of the client to instant layers of the substrate client architecture so that asynchronous loading and replacement of components may potentially be enabled. Uh, to modularize the monolithic WASM binary of a client. So I know what WASI is. I don't know if new work being done with WASI or talking about WASI in general, if there's something based on WASI that I'm not aware of. Um, don't understand what you're talking about, sorry. <laughs> okay, well, I think that's it. Uh, thank you so much, Pierre, for your time, for your presentation and for answering all those questions. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, so up next, we have Alex Seaman, uh, founder of Subsocial. Let me just invite him on screen to join us. He is accepting and connecting, so just bear with us for a moment. Great. 
Great. Hi, Alex. Oh, hi, guys. Great to Sorry. have you here. Thank you very much for in inviting me here. And uh, I already shared uh, my slides to the chat so you can open pages and sometimes there are links so you can follow the links that I'm presenting. So, um, oh, wait, I didn't share my screen, right? <laughs> yeah, you need to share your screen to get started. <laughs> Um, share screen. Okay, I think I'll try to share the entire screen if it will be okay in terms of uh, loading. So, do you see my presentation now? Yeah, we see your presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. So, I'm Alex Simon, founder of uh, Subsocial network it's a project uh, that uh, brings social networking tools to substrate and ipfs actually so you can think of it like a decentralized social networking protocol for polkadot uh, slash kusama ecosystem and uh, i would like to start with uh, the features that we already have um, so as a normal um, regular uh, social network, if you compare to some very common uh, features, uh, you can expect something like blogs, posts, comments, votes, uh, follows, uh, shares, personal uh, feed of uh, news from the blogs you follow, and notifications, and uh, full text search, and maybe search engine optimization. And we have all of this. So, in our case, uh, the difference is that we don't have blocks, but we rather have spaces. By the way, do you see my cursor? OK, I don't know. Uh, so we have spaces. And spaces, it's uh, something like uh, on other systems, uh, they call blocks or channels or groups. And But they, they're more flexible because they allow you to have only one owner like a personal blog, or you can turn your space into a public group or to membership-based uh, group, and so on. And so obviously, we have posts and comments and, and votes. And all this stuff works on Substage version 2. And, but we started with version 1, and we did a couple of migrations. And uh, what we store in, sub in Substage, in Substage, we store uh, mostly relations between uh, who, uh, what account created what space, and so it means who owns the space, who can write to the space, then who created that post or answered with this comment to another post, or who upvoted and voted this comment or post, and so on. But content is uh, stored in IPFS. So on Substrate, we store only uh, content ID from IPFS. And it's a uh, matter of uh, the responsibility of uh, of chain services or web UI, mobile UI to bind um, relations and structures from substrate to the uh, IP content from IPFS. Also, we support uh, login via Polkadot extension. So if you already have any substrate-based chain account ID like Polkadot, uh, Kusama, Fala, Plasm, Akala, Karura, anything. You can just use it and just uh, log in with Polkadot extension with your account, or you can create another account. So this is not a problem. And also, I would like to add that uh, such as uh, ownership of spaces and posts is implemented uh, via a field uh, for owner that is account ID. So it means that. Uh, uh, you can use Altisig to co own your spaces and your posts. And maybe even it could be improved uh, to make it a little bit more complex, but to introduce uh, shares of how much uh, any account, each account owns of this space. Uh, and it could impact on uh, how, how much, uh, how big reward uh, this or another person will get depending on their shares of ownership. But we don't have this implemented yet, but you already can use uh, multi-ownership of spaces. 
Oh, besides that, uh, such as we build on Substrate, uh, but uh, Substrate doesn't uh, provide us with uh, SQL like queries, and it doesn't uh, include like by default uh, search engine optimization stuff and full text search. So, but on, on normal uh, social networks, uh, people expect this functionality like out of the box. There should be personalized feeds, notification, full text search. It should be server search engine optimized. And we also did this. So how we do this? Uh, for, for this reason, for personalized field and notification and full text search, we use off-chain services. We will review, it, review them a little bit later. And for search engine optimization, we use a framework, Next.js. It's uh, built on React. But actually, there are, there are other approaches. So that uh, when user ask uh, a page for the first time, when um, Google bot or any other search engine bot goes to the URL, it gets uh, uh, data on on server side. So it means that uh, uh, in in this way, there should be a s server. It could be one server or different servers, because with uh, Substrate uh, you can build applications that is. Uh, stateless in terms of server. So you can have multiple servers and uh, even share the network load between the different servers. So, but if you want a server side engine, you, you should have a server. But from uh, our experience, Google really uses uh, client side uh, crawling actually. And from one point of view, it's even not, not so good because uh, subject takes a lot of time. I mean, Polkadot API library takes uh, several seconds, like four seconds to resolve all type metadata and so on. And Google uh, sees this and his, it, it says that uh, your application doesn't perform really, really well, especially for mobile experience. So yeah, there are a lot of uh, corner cases uh, where your subset application should be improved if you want to have good coverage by Google indexes. Uh, search indexes. So this is uh, how search engine uh, the data looks like. If you request a page uh, on subsocial um, and and look at the code that the server returns, so you can see that there is title and uh, keywords and description and other met metadata stuff like open graph, title, description, image, and the similar for Twitter. So having this uh, allows us to have uh, nice previews of uh, any post or comment or space uh, in, a, in a Twitter or Telegram or any other social network. So it will show um, title, some part of description and uh, image. So also it's uh, mobile friendly, but uh, uh, with exceptions that uh, on mobile you can currently you can just only read the data because uh, interactions with uh, substrate is done through via Polkadot extension and on mobile you cannot have uh, plugins in your mobile browser currently so uh, right now it works like uh, just in read mode so you can um, read what people write right and then if you want to answer uh, you need to go to above so it's not very user friendly and people already asking for mobile apps and so on and uh, yeah we started to work on mobile apps but it is it as it is so let's uh, do a short demo on site um so now right now we're on a uh, subsocial uh, network of uh, web app and what we can see so i already uh, logged in with uh, my account this subsocial account shows uh, account address, balances, uh, followers following. You can go to edit your profile. You also can switch to other accounts. And this means that uh, it will show different personalized feed and notifications and uh, um, the spaces that are owned by this uh, or that account and so on. So uh, what we can see here, by, by default, uh, you will see the latest posts like uh, what people write in subsocial. So post previews, um, this title, image, and, and so on. Like all, all the stuff uh, is taken from a mix of uh, Substrate and APFS. 
for example, uh, here we can see post, but it is, this, is, this, is post, this post was posted to space Polka Daughters by account Polka Daughters, and you can see pop up. So this is an account. So you can follow it right from here, for example. And yeah, uh, any mutation takes. Uh, should be sent as a transaction. It, it's of course annoying, uh, and we have ideas how to improve this. But it's uh, not so safe uh, to store um, private keys uh, directly on browser. So it is better to interact uh, through extension. But uh, if you want some uh, level to mitigate between uh, user experience uh, and uh, to mitigate some risks, so maybe you, you, you can consider to store. Uh, key pairs directly in uh, local storage of your browser, uh, for example, uh, encrypted with uh, password, let's say. So when user opens site for the first time, you decrypt the key pair, and then you will not ask for signing uh, transactions. And the same approach should be used on mobile app. <clears throat> but right now, we just uh, work through extension. <clears throat> so yeah, if you hover over account, you see that you're already following it, so you can just unfollow it. And um, then you can see comments. And what is interesting is that in our case, posts and comments uses the same structure and approach. It's uh, all of them are comment, uh, posts. So post is a post, comment is a post, and uh, we also have shared post. Shared post is also a post. But uh, they have slightly different extensions, but share a lot of stuff, a, a lot of similar stuff. And the last section is uh, with spaces. So here you can see space previews. And that other people created. Then you can uh, see, for example, notifications. So what notifications uh, my account has. So far, I, I, I have uh, this, this many notifications. It uses uh, endless scroll, so uh, like a normal social network. You scroll to the bottom and it preloads its uh, stuff. So it shows uh, what account and profile uh, does with uh, your space. So it, currently it shows a lot of space. It's like I'm owner of this space because we preloaded the uh, polka.project spaces to protect from uh, cyber squatters. There are some people that uh, likes to uh, reserve uh, handles of uh, Existing projects and pretend it says this project. So we just preserved this project and we implemented transfer ownership and we already transferred to maybe like, I don't know, 15 spaces we transferred. <clears throat> so the next thing is the feed. And you can see feed on the homepage. It gets to load some time because uh, it's one of the challenges with uh, substrate in a, in a browser. Uh, convertation from substrate binary data to uh, JavaScript objects is quite slow, and it takes like s several seconds uh, to resolve all the data from substrate uh, to JavaScript and so on. So, for example, you can see here uh, I have uh, dot .lib newsletter from Bruno. We can check this post here. So again, it has. Uh, Title and image, and it supports Markdown, so you can have links and titles uh, and sections and like everything. And text is uh, stored on block in, in APFS, and image as well. Uh, also, we're planning to support uh, mod uh, complex format of course, like to insert uh, embed uh, videos from YouTube, Vimeo, and embed embed tweets and gifts from GitHub, but uh, right now we don't. We, we support only Markdown Editor and uh, Im Image Cover. So we can upload and load from here. You can see that uh, I already uh, uploaded this post because it's green, and I can undownload it, for example. So if you click here, wait a little bit, and it should be undownloaded. Maybe it's not updated yet. So I can remove it. Meanwhile, uh, let's show let's show you the space, how, how the space looks looks like. It's uh, quite similar to how it looks on Twitter. So if you 
compared with the uh, account on Twitter, you can see posts uh, and answers and likes and so on. So this is a subsocial space. So it's uh, subspo subsocial has its space uh, called subsocial and subsocial. So we can follow subsocial and subsocial uh, kind of recursion. <laughs> so what you have like name, description, and you can see followers right from here. So who is following? Yeah. As I said, uh, the resolving of the data is a little bit slow because of data conversion. So you can see Jam here and Bruno and other good guys. They have a great company. <laughs> so um, you have social links over here. And obviously, you have your posts that you posted to this space. And as I mentioned, uh, right now, posts look like uh, it's more like a personal blog, but uh, actually they can be converted to public group or membership-based group. And we already have this functionality in blockchain. You can check it on uh, Polkablotops, for example. But uh, on the UI, we still need to add this uh, support for uh, different roles and permissions. Um, for example, you can see uh, comments right from here. So we don't even need to open a post, so you can read comments from here. So some people commented and it, it highlights the author here it, 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 it shows post author so again you can upload and vote and actually this is the same functionality as, as for posts so upload and vote comments the same as upload and vote posts with little difference and the cool thing that is you can share a uh, comment so this in, in this way it's uh, quite similar to the, how it works on twitter because on twitter um the status is a post, kind of post in our case, and uh, the response to a tweet is uh, like a comment in our case. And on Twitter, you can share any status and the response, and in, in, in our case, you also can share a comment. And I, I find this quite uh, interesting and cool because sometimes comments are much better than the post itself. So why not to share a comment, right? Okay, so yeah, you can check uh, how this share com share post tool look like so it just shows you a pop-up model so you select where you want to post your for example to another space like acropolis i don't know so you can optionally add some opinion here and it shows preview of the post you're going to show and you just click uh, create post and also, it sh UI shows you um, a shortcut for creating a new post. For example, if you have uh, several spaces, it will show you space selector. So you, you need to select where you want to post. For example, you want to post to this space, right? So you just click here. And it will reject uh, a post and uh, shows you that you're going to post to this space. And uh, to compare, for example, you have an account that owns uh, no, sp no spaces. So now it shows create a space because you don't have spaces yet. So we cannot post to any space. And then another account has only one space. And in this case, um, actually, I think, oh, maybe it's another account. So if you have one space, uh, it should show you just uh, one button. So we can pause there. Also, you can, uh, interesting feature is to see the activities of, of uh, an account. So let's switch to uh, subsocial account. It's quite active. So here you can see uh, the post that account posted in any spaces. Like for example, posted on subsocial. And here it posted to subsocial community highlights. And here it posted to subkitties. And there are another tabs like uh, it shows comments posted again by this account. And again, it, it takes some time to load from substrate and result data. And then you can see reactions. Currently, it shows just all reactions. It doesn't uh, separate between like uploads and votes. And uh, yeah, we need to improve this. But right now, it shows like uh, somebody reacted uh, to this. And in this case, we are looking at at particular account activity, so it, so it shows like uh, this, 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 this account uh, reacted to something. Then it shows follow, so uh, the spaces that I follow in this case. Hmm. For example, I followed Sean Tabriz recently. And yeah, you can see the spaces that this account's on. 
and this shows like almost 200 spaces because this is said to be pre-registered spaces so teams can claim them and obviously all activities and i, I mentioned before that we have a transfer space ownership and let's uh, show how it looks so for example uh, uh, trust wallet wanted to claim their space for free and they just uh, can reach out us on twitter or telegram and if they post it they are, um, real founders of this project like to write from their twitter uh, we can click this uh, go to the menu on this space and it has edit space right post hide space and transfer ownership so we click transfer ownership and let's copy paste some another account let's say this one so i just copied oops it switched to that account okay let's switch back so now we are again on sub social account and let's click on transfer ownership so then you insert the uh, account address of, of new owner that you want to propose this ownership and we implemented transfer ownership as a two-step process uh, like with uh, very classic approaches in uh, ethereum smart contracts because in this way maybe pro you can substitute person so maybe uh, you, you create a space called uh, Tesla Sucks and then you, you transfer ownership to Elon, Elon Musk and then uh, the press will write that Elon Musk created space Tesla Sucks so it will be not very good to Elon Musk, right? Or something like this. So in this way, what we implemented, it's a two-step process. So you just uh, like sort of propose uh, ownership to another account and right now after a signed transaction, it will not make uh, that account an owner of the space so okay so now it's uh, transfer ownership started and you can see right now it shows this uh, uh helpful warning message that uh, transfer of ownership is in progress and right now uh, i'm the owner still uh, until it's uh, confirmed and i can cancel this ownership so let's go to the space i cancel this transfer before it was claimed but if you click change to another account that uh, is not current owner and that is not a uh, possible new owner it, it see nothing but if you switch to the uh, potential or a new owner it shows uh, do you want to accept this uh, ownership accept reject that's it so for example if you reject again you need to sign transaction and okay now you don't see any any warning and again if i switch back to subsocial it also shows no warning because uh, you know, an owner rejected so i guess uh, that's it for demo and uh, then i plan it to go through some technical details uh, that we have oh ah, yeah also one one note about uh, uh, web app so in um in one branch, uh, Kusama integration on web, web, our web app already integrated Kusama identity information like emails, web, uh, website, Riot, and so on, and labels like console member and validator and so on. So in this uh, uh, new uh, pull request, uh, we have started integration with Kusama, and obviously we can support Polkadot, but uh, currently it's not deployed yet. So. So do we have any questions so far and how much time we have? Yeah, we have some questions. Um, we can start asking them. Or maybe I will just continue to technical part and then uh, if we have time, right? Yeah, I think you have like another 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go a little bit through technical part. Uh, and uh, a small note about uh, the future plans. So based on the feedback from uh, our early users uh, we made this decision that our priorities uh, is uh, to create a mobile app and to introduce fearless transactions or sort of fearless transactions still under research and we need to support uh, different monetization models um, we can think about such models like steamit or send.co or something similar to patreon where you can have pay your current subscriptions from your like if you're a content creator and you have follower followers and fan base so we can um, introduce uh, pay your current subscriptions or you can have a tips uh, quite similar to well, how it is on, on kusama but maybe a little bit different so we're thinking about this and uh, 
we started to work on donations module and subscriptions. Uh, this uh, modules are in uh, pull request, but it's, they're not merged in, in uh, our current node that is running. Yeah, I also uh, forget to mention that we already launched a beta net. So it's, I don't know, it's something like a test net, but with the uh, aim to preserve the state. So we, we're planning to migrate this uh, the state of our current uh, beta net to mainnet when we're ready to launch mainnet. So, okay, let's go to tec more technical parts. So uh, you can run uh, all our components. Currently we have such components like uh, blockchain substrate node and of chain services like indexing to Postgres, Elasticsearch, and the third uh, module or part is uh, web UI and there's something else I, I don't remember exactly. So all this stuff you can run with uh, our subsocial starter if you go to this link. So we can go to slides and open this link if you're interested. And we use this Docker uh, as well. Okay, so this is a source code. So we can go to Dubforce and GitHub and check the code. And I would like to mention that um, uh, during the development, we created uh, this uh, custom pilots for Substrate and even more. I just listed the most uh, uh, used ones. I mean, the, the, those that we already use because there are some uh, pilots in development. And uh, they're quite uh, uh, needed more uh, pilots. Like uh, this week allows to create a spaces and another uh, pilot allows you to have followers for your space. And another one keeps uh, editing history of a space and the similar to post, so we have space history and post history. And then uh, another pilot allows you to transfer and accept ownership of a space. And then there are a few other modules uh, to manage um, dynamic uh, roles and uh, permissions per your space. So with this, you can assign moderators and uh, publishers and memberships and uh, other stuff. It's much similar to uh, how you can create members and roles and so on on Discord. So we were inspired by the approach. And also you have profiles. These profiles you can have avatar and name uh, for your account. And it also adds uh, uh, some statistics like uh, how many followers this account has, how many ac other accounts this account follows, and some reputation and other stuff. So what I would recommend you when you develop in custom modules for Substrate is that to read this recipe. I would highly recommend because uh, when we started, we developed a lot of stuff in just in one palette and that was quite huge palette, like 1,500 uh, uh, lines of code. So it was uh, hard to um, navigate in that uh, palette and to, to add new features. So we just uh, asked uh, Joshua from Parity to help us uh, separate in, uh, palettes and uh, he uh, created this uh, recipe. So uh, after that, we uh, split our palettes on, on that uh, number of palettes that I showed you before. And we use these two approaches like tightly and loosely coupled palettes. For example, um, a lot of palettes depend on spaces because uh, post should be posted to some spaces and uh, ownership uh, should be of some space and like a lot of stuff uh, happens uh, and depends on spaces but uh, with um, roles uh, sometimes uh, it's not required to have roles or permissions for some functionality so we don't have too much time to discuss in details of this but what I would just recommend just go to this uh, URL and check this then uh, I would like to mention that uh, we follow a little bit of CRUD style in, in our substrate and what it means I mean you can see that there is a star be, uh, near the D because it's quite hard to implement the delish, deletion of data on blockchain but it's kind of so we have create read and add update and plus we use uh, some uh, convention for the structure structure struct, structs that we create like spaces posts and profiles and mostly uh, most of the time we we have this a kind of ID, like post ID or space ID. And then usually we have created updated uh, to keep track uh, who, what account, and what block at what time stamp created uh, that structure or updated. So update is optional. And also we, we keep track of owner. And uh, maybe you can think that 
why you have owner if you already have created but owner is is that uh here is if you want to transfer ownership or sell your post or rent out your post to another space for some time and make money on this right so you need a way to change owner and but but at the same time it may be useful to keep track who created that originally and then content is a, a num that points to either ipfs or to none if there is no content or potentially it can support uh, hypercore protocol or even private database so maybe in this content enum you want to put the uh, name of database and name of table and name of uh, column uh, and id uh, value and also we use hidden field uh, to emulate uh, sort of like delete operation so it's like in our case it's not delete it's just a uh, hide so it's like uh, an owner of a space or post commands to a protocol to a platforms that uh, please don't show it so respect my decision and then show it to google don't show it to users and um, but of course you can do something some sort of deletion but it's it's quite complicated because when you delete something you need to uh, keep track of what relations you created and delete everything everything everywhere every mentions of this entity either it's a space or a post and uh, then i would recommend uh, to use this approach and some uh, hardcore blockchain uh, the developers maybe are against this approach but uh, in our case we are focused on user experience and uh, even uh, user experience of developers of uh, web apps and mobile apps and we find this quite helpful to have maps of ids so what does mean so what does this mean so uh, as i mentioned uh, we use substrate for managing relations and ownerships and that means that uh something is uh, owned by someone else ev everywhere every time and for example uh account owns some spaces so we keep track of uh, what space ids on this account so the, here is a vector of space ids and here is the owner of account the similar for um, comments and posts and uh, replies and so on so uh, most of the time we have like a uh, post ID uh, that the parent and uh, direct children. And for sub comments and sub sub comments, uh, every level is introduced like a parent ID to the direct children. So in this way, we can have a tree of comments as I showed you on demo. And another thing is that post ID is by space. So in this space, we have this uh, list of posts. So it's very simple and easy to use on a web, web app. One of the downsides is that uh, it's it's better to keep uh, as less as possible data in substrate and uh, as an, an improvement uh, we could put this uh, maps of ids to uh, of chain worker uh, storage that is uh, like four times or something faster to get data from and but currently from what i remember it doesn't support uh, map type of storage uh, so of chain workers local storage doesn't support uh, map type of storages so once it supports i i think we will migrate to this but why it's helpful for example you want to launch a social network that doesn't rely on server as i mentioned before and it's quite possible because you can have a feed you can have spaces posts comments likes everything uh what is hard is hard to implement uh, notifications and full text search but like a lot of stuff can be implemented without a uh, off-chain server but for this uh you you would need to have this uh, maps of ids in substrate and in, in, in some way like either in a uh, runtime storage or in uh, off-chain worker storage then i would like to re uh, to remind you not to forget about events it's like obvious but uh, again quite f helpful and this is a list of all events that we are interested in in our off-chain services when we build uh, personalized feeds and notifications we subscribe to substrate archive node in the uh, Node.js uh, server application and it just uh, filters and tries to find all these events that we're interested in and based on this to create data in Postgres uh, databases like activities, feeds, notifications, uh, account followers, space followers and so on. And then uh, about testing. So it's uh, of course very uh, useful to, to have a test coverage for anything but uh, in this in this uh, case, I would like to mention about uh, test testing of uh, of chain indexing. And for this, uh, we just recently implemented the uh, first uh, version of our of chain indexing test framework. And uh, what are the 
key points here. So if you want to cover uh, your off-chain indexing functionality, uh, what is like minimum stuff that you need? You need to export events, let's say to a CSV file or to JSON file. Uh, and you, you can just export events that you're interested in. You don't need to export any events like transaction, exchange X and uh, something else, something else. You can just export, like in our case, space created, post created, space updated, space forward, uh, comment created, and so on. And then you need to export storage data. In our case, we export uh, space structures, post structures, and profiles. Then you need to export uh, the data of uh, SQL tables from Postgres, for example, to CSV file. In case uh, your indexing functionality works correctly, so you're just uh, making a snapshot of a uh, expected uh, good working result of uh, indexing. And then you just uh, run your indexing in test mode and get data not from Substrate. So you're not subscribing to Substrate blockchain and not to get any events from there and data from uh, runtime storage or something else. But you just uh, get events from files, you get uh, storage data from files, and then just using the same processing uh, functionality and uh, comparing expected uh, data to actual data. So this is how we implement the testing framework in for our off-chain services. And I would like to mention that the features that are uh, quite hard to implement, to, to have on social network based on, on blockchain without uh, off-chain services, it's uh, it includes personalized notifications because notifications are quite tricky. You need to notify that somebody replied to your comment. Uh, if you are owner of that post uh, that has includes the parent comment and, and so on, like uh, you want to have aggregations because uh, if you have a popular account and uh, like thousands of people follow it, you don't want to have like thousands of notifications. You you want to have like one notifications. It looks like. Uh, Bruno and uh, 999 other people followed your account, just one notification, so not over spam with uh, information on uh, web UI. And also, it's quite hard to have full text search because Substrate doesn't, uh, uh, it is not shipped with full text search. So basically, you need to have this. Uh, I can think about some uh, hacks that you can implement full text search indexing on uh, client side, for example by indexing just posts from the spaces that's, that current account is follow. So normally people don't follow more than thousand something entities. And I can easily imagine that if uh, on average any space uh, or account has like 20 status articles, something, then, then it will be like uh, 10,000, 20,000 of uh, entities to index. So it could not be a huge problem, but uh, still uh, you cannot have um, uh, fast indexing of everything on a user side. So you cannot have a uh, fully featured full text search without uh, off chain services. And I would like to mention about challenges of uh, building on a substrate um, in particular for a web application. And here I, I also take in account the feedback from uh, Google tools that uh, measure the performance of web app and uh, why it's matter. Because if you want your social network or community or so on to be uh, easily found by people through Google, uh, then Google takes in account a lot of uh, different metrics and uh, um, information. Like, do you have server side range and do you have keywords, titles? Uh, is it search engine optimized? And even the performance of your site. And for example, Google says that we have very, very, very bad performance for our mobile app web application because uh, subs uh, so the Polkadot API library is quite heavy because it has VASM code. And if I'm not mistaken, it's like 700 kilobytes or 500. And then uh, it takes like several seconds to resolve types, metadata, and all this uh, mappings for substrate uh, types. And then it's uh, quite slow when it comes about a conversion of uh, data received from substrate blockchain to JavaScript objects un until we can work with this data. So everything is slow, is uh, big, and, and so on. And uh, currently, we work on a solution that is based on substrate uh, RPC methods that return JSON objects. And we tested uh, this approach, and it uh, yesterday it showed like from four to 30 times faster 
uh, receiving and um, the data from substrate uh, to the point when we already can work with this data to compare into uh, the, the approach when uh, we use uh, right now like polka.api and of course you, you, you don't have a scale support for sub, substrate so you, you need to have uh, off-chain indexers and there are quite a few solutions for substrates there are I, I saw the solutions uh, that uh, build GraphQL uh, for your substrate, like uh, uh, Hydra, uh, QL, something like this. And then another one from uh, another grant project from Web3 Foundation. And there is uh, one indexer uh, from ORML library, Open Gen Time Model library. They also indexing in Postgres. So you can find quite similar. Um, several uh, approaches how to index substrate data and also there is substrate archive but uh, we decided not to use it right now because it indexes like everything we don't need everything in postgres we just need uh, some specific data so un un unless uh, substrate archive has filtering based on what events we are interested in um i, I don't know we, do we don't need to use it at least in our case so you can follow us on twitter and if you have time you can go to questions Okay, we have quite a few questions here. Uh, we have nine questions in the lineup, so I don't know if we're going to get through all of them. Um, the first question is asking if you can change ownership, but I think you covered this already, and this question came yeah, from before. Yeah, so we can we can skip this question. Uh, the next one, everyone has repetition on subsocial. Could you say how it's calculated? Okay, so uh, before I thought, yeah, reputation is a big topic, and uh, why it's big? Because uh, reputation is um, like uh, you can think of it like uh, you can use it for, to, to der derivate, uh, make a derivative to the rewards that, uh, that this or that account uh, can get on social networks and, and on, on, on finance and so on. But uh, what I found that it's quite hard to have good reputation formulas in blockchain because uh, it should have quite expected and uh, small time of uh, calculation and you need to be able to update reputation for example you wrote some post and then uh, somebody liked you and you got reputation of 100 points and then Gavin Wood came and imagine that he has like a lot of reputation in uh, blockchain uh, related uh, spaces and your reputation should be increased and then maybe someone else uh, uploaded uh, several times again would and uh, he has more reputation but your reputation also uh, ideally should be recalculated so all these recalculations is quite hard on blockchain and right now we have re reputation but uh, i'm not happy with this so i think we need to move calculation of reputation to off chain but currently it's calculated like um, Every action like upload, downvote, share, follow has its own weight, like uh, five points, 10 points, uh, two points, something like this. And it's get multiplied by uh, logarithm two of uh, reputation of the person who made this action to the entity that you own. So the owner of the entity that receives some action like upload, downvote, follow, uh, get uh, added or uh, decreased uh, the a weight of the action multiplied by logarithm of uh, reputation of uh, upvoter, downvoter, follower. So it's like right now. Cool. Is there a plan to have a web shop integration in subsocial like we're seeing now in Facebook? Oh, where did it go? Yeah, OK, I, I read that message. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it totally makes sense. And uh, if you go to site, uh, it, it says, uh, subsocial is the uh, social networking and marketplace uh, protocol and uh, that's why we have this marketplace so uh, of course we're planning to add support uh, to monetize your content and by content i don't mean only articles or videos or posts uh, like post is a it's a piece of information and post could uh, be, be, could describe a product like an in online shops and so on so yeah why not uh, we, we, you can build uh, for example something like a bazaar so there is a classifiers on uh, bitcoin and ipfs so you can build this on subsocial but you need to extend post and i mentioned uh, before that uh, we already have three types of posts like a normal post a shared post and comment and uh, we're thinking to introduce more uh, kinds of posts like polls 
or uh, like a classifier or job or event and so on. So I don't see a problem here. Cool. Um, how was the experience of integrating a substrate based chain with IPFS? Yeah, it's uh, not a very good experience. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I felt so many pain with, uh, when working with IPFS. It's, it's very crazy. So, and uh, I mean, I would like to say thank you to Substrate community because it's, it's I don't know, in my opinion, it's uh, it's very uh, high quality community and you can have a lot of feed, uh, support and on Riot and so on. And for, in contrast to IPFS, uh, I don't even know where the charts. Uh, some, sometimes I participated in hackathons and APFS, and they create uh, ad hoc charts uh, during hackathons, and then uh, hackathons is finished, and it, it don't they don't have charts like riots uh, for substrate, and you need to go to forums, and for through forums you get slow feedback, and and so on. For example, we uh, tried to use APFS uh, cluster to have replication and. Actually, at the end, we could not uh, set it properly. It's it's crazy. I'm quite. Uh, sometimes I'm very sad about all this stuff. But I mean, it it works. Um, some so yeah. Is there a plan to have a web shop integration? Oh, there that's it, that's where it went. <laughs> yeah, we answered this one. So, mm -hmm. what should I do when I become out of tokes? Buy it. How is social are going to be profitable? Yeah, so this is one of the most popular questions. <laughs> so the so plan is that uh, we're planning to introduce something like fearless transactions, and uh, it could be like um, there could be some bandwidth uh, reserved uh, per block. Maybe I don't know. Like thirty percent of block could be dedicated to completely free transactions for accounts that are verified. Like uh, with Polkadot and Kusama, they register, so we can also introduce something like this, like the register. And if you, the account uh, um, verify, has ver verified connection with uh, through email or phone number or uh, Twitter, etc., uh, that account can have like, uh, I don't know, one, two posts per day, something like this. It could be cal recalculated every day based on the demand. So this is one of the ideas. And another idea as that uh, Sean Tabrizim uh, mentioned is that uh, you can get like few less transactions uh, if you stake this amount of tokens. Let's say if you stake uh, like, let's say $5 per month, equivalent of $5 per month, you get two posts per day. If you stake $20 per month, you get 10 posts per day, something like this. So to prevent from uh, uh, abuse and uh, uh, civil attacks, any idea how to make better UX experience by confirmation? Yeah, uh, the, how to get better experience uh, without confirmations is that uh, you need to store a uh, key pair on your on the, uh, UI side, either it's a web UI or mobile app. And so it's not a problem to implement this. It's a problem to keep track of this and not to introduce any security holes because if you manage your uh, key pairs in the same app uh, that is very frequently developed. Uh, so you can easily uh, um, miss that, uh, that situation when somebody introduced some uh, security hole and uh, it just sends uh, private keys uh, uh, via web, I don't know, something, some protocol to another to att attacker. So that's why, for example, Polkadot extension doesn't want to introduce a lot of functionality. They, they don't want to introduce this functionality because uh, more functionality, more, more potential bugs, more security issues. So if you, one of the things I can think of is that just let's say create a super small library that manages just all uh, your key pairs. And then if you use this library on UI, so yeah, then you will have no uh, confirmation uh, models. How do you claim space on subsocial? Uh, so, uh, for example, if you own, I don't know, let's say uh, you're owner of uh, there is substrate seminar space, and you can uh, message me on uh, right, and I know that uh, yeah, you work at uh, Parity and you represent substrate seminar. I can transfer it to you, uh, but, or we just can go and create any space you want, and that's it. So, like everyone can 
ask uh, tokens in our for such shot and create any space they want. Is it possible to make a load of times load time shorter? Uh, yes, it's a. Uh, I mean, a uh, lot time of uh, web app, I guess. Um, also, can be used. From, yeah, I, I use web app from web, Brave browser. Uh, I use I use it from uh, Brave browser and Firefox and Chrome with no problems. Um, so, how to make load time uh, faster? And yeah, we're working on this. And you need to remove dependency, direct dependency on Polkadot API because it has like 700 something kilobytes. And um, one of the approaches is that uh, you can get data through server side. So, you, then you will introduce a little bit centralization. Or you can uh, go with this way that we are currently working on right now. It's not instant progress. So what we are doing, we uh, introduce an, a, a lot of uh, custom RPC endpoints for our use UI that is uh, high, highly dictated as, by the needs of UI, like uh, get all public posts or get last uh, X public posts or get the page of public posts with, uh, on this page and this page uh, size number. So, and then just uh, convert it to JSON. So in this way, it for read mode if you before you are signed in before you want to make a mutation to a state if you're only just uh, in read mode as a lot of users or google bots so you don't need to load um, uh, to have to have polkadot api in a bundle of your web app and then you can uh, load it dynamically um, laser load uh, polkadot api when a user is uh, ready to interact uh, with the state, so I mean to change the state, or it's the user signed in. So we're planning to implement this, and and then load time will be dramatically faster, and uh, um, the web app will will be working much faster. Any plans for permissions uh, other than ownership uh, structure? Yeah, we, we already have this. We, uh, we already have uh, roles and permissions, and uh, if you go, uh, do I share my screen? I guess no. So if you go to uh, to our okay, I can share it. If you go to our um, repository, so you need to open a node repo. Then, then you go to palettes, and you can see permissions and roles. And in permissions, uh, it's uh, it has a set of all possible permissions. And in roles, it means uh, dynamic roles. So for example, we can take a short, uh, first look, quick look here. And we have this list of permissions already built in. And it already includes uh, what you're asking, like uh, can uh, people create posts? Can people create comments? Uh, can they update own comments? For example, you're creating like social network for politics, and maybe you don't want to allow them to edit comments and post. So as they say, they say it as they say, it. that's it. And maybe you, you want to mimic a Twitter, and on Twitter you you cannot edit, but you can delete it. And maybe you also want to be similar to Twitter, then you need to disable download because on Twitter there is only like only like. Uh, but if you want to have a Reddit-like functionality, then you want to have download, right? And then it also includes, uh, can you override space permissions and post permissions on? And we also have built-in roles, like uh, we have four built-in roles right now. No one, like no one can do this permission. Uh, everyone can do this permission, like any account follower of the current space and uh, current space owner can do this. And by, the, by default, we already set uh, some predefined permissions like space owner can create uh, update anything and uh, follow uh, like anyone can comment but uh, um, no one I mean only all space owner can create posts so something like this is by default and if you go to roles again very very quickly so um, we have a role structure uh, that also follows the scrap pattern like created updated ID 
and content from APFS. So like it could have a name of a role and description and maybe like icon avatar or something like this. And uh, we have this events like created, updated, deleted. And then obviously we have uh, methods like uh, uh, create a role, update existing role, then uh, delete role completely or grant role to a certain account, uh, I mean, a vector of accounts, or revoke role from a particular vector of accounts. Yeah, okay, that's it. Great, thank you so much, Alex. I know there's one more question that came in there, but I actually really need to end the event by now. Uh, can you federate to subsocial nodes? understand and enforce each other. Uh, you mean like uh, subsocial chains maybe? Like subsocial, because uh, like subsocial nodes share the same state. So if you think asking about uh, can separate subsocial based chains uh, share and understand permissions, I guess yes, because of uh, the similar approaches with parachains, right? But right now it's not possible because uh, yeah. It, it's uh, possible, but it's it's not here. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Alex. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this virtual meetup for, I think it'll be our last for this year. Um, and then we'll see you in the new year for more fun topics about Substrate and Polkadot. Yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah, thank you. And happy Thanksgiving to all the Americans are in here. <laughs> see you next time. Ciao.